This episode is dedicated to Stuart Pollock. I humbly dedicate this episode to the talented folks at Rusty Quill and to supporters of good art and content everywhere. Rusty Quill presents... The Magnus Protocol. Episode 11. Marked. Pocket works. If it had signal. Shit! Hold on, Jack. I'm on my way. <sighs> Good morning. Brackets night. How are we hanging? Great. Well, luckily, your best friend in this or any other world, the one and only Alice Dyer, has bought you a fancy coffee and a discount pastry. Not the Alice Dyer, from such hits as, well, at least it wasn't both legs, and who needs grandparents anyway? The very same. Here, oat milk latte with hazelnut syrup, God's final curse on a fallen world. I'm telling you, it's nice. It's chemical warfare waged upon the tongues of the foolish. Besides, I'm sweet enough already. <laughs> Clearly. And for a pastry, you've got a choice of cinnamon swirl or pan au chocolate. Fair warning, they're both a bit stale, so there's not much in it. You don't need to do this, you know. I'm fine. Oh, really? Fantastic. You just spit that coffee back out then, and I can go get a refund. I do get it. Facing your past is tough. Finding out there isn't any past left to actually face, that's even tougher. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when all's said and done, you just have to choose. Cinnamon swirl or pan au chocolate? <sighs> Cinnamon swirl, please. Nah, you took too long. You get pan au chocolate. Curses! You actually wanted the pan au chocolate, didn't you? Well, what can I say? You're predictable. Damn it. <laughs> They're not that stale. I just can't believe it all turned out to be a waste of time. Oh yeah, massively pointless. Train tickets cost an arm and a leg too. Jesus, alright. What? You're the one who says they don't need empty platitudes. I thought I'd maybe try harsh truths. Well, can you maybe try something else? Like... Changing the subject, maybe? Where is Celia and Gwen? I've got a mocker for Celia, and I was really looking forward to pretending I accidentally forgot to order Gwen anything. They're not here yet. Did they call in? I didn't get anything. Might have gone through to Lena. Hey, are you alright? You keep glancing at the door. Hmm? Nah, it, it's nothing. It's not nothing. You're on edge. It's stupid. So? I just... I don't know. When I left the coffee shop, it felt like someone was following me. What did they look like? Well, I didn't actually see anyone, but it wouldn't be the first time. London's creep central. 
So, how can you be sure you were followed if you didn't see anyone? I'm not sure. That's why it's bothering me so much. Sounds like maybe you were more bothered by that soggy ruin than you admit. Don't joke about that, mate. I was dreaming about it all day. <laughs> It'll be nothing. I'm just jumpy. I could walk you home this morning if you'd like. Yeah, actually. If you're offering. I am. Cool. Because I worry about you. You're too delicate to be safe out there without me watching your back. Of course. Anyway, you know what will take our minds off it? Glassifying unspeakable horrors all night for no discernible reason? You know it. <sighs> to Alison and Ashley, we're G. Leslie at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk From Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 6th, 2020 Subject, Ray, Padstone Civil Cemetery Exhumations Hi Alison, you asked for a quick email of confirmation when the work began. Just to say everything has been proceeding as anticipated. It's taking longer than usual to dig due to the cold snap, but we've already accounted for that in our timelines. We also did some load testing of the ground near the cliff edge, and it looks like there's only a few graves where the erosion means we won't be able to use the bobcat. And that's few enough that my boys can do that by hand. The first few days have gone smoothly, and several units have already been reinterred at New Quay with no problem. David, the medical examiner, seems happy enough with all the precautions we're taking, and while we've certainly had our fair share of looky-loos, there's not been any sign of the protesters you were so concerned about stirring up. I guess it helps that no one's been buried here for over a hundred years, so it's not like we're pulling up Grandad. The sailors here haven't seen mourners since Queen Vic. On a personal note, I'd like to say thank you for using us to do this job. I know we can't have been the cheapest company to put in a bid, but as local lads we've been coming to this graveyard all our lives, even if just to sneak some booze as stupid teenagers. And now that the cliff's finally giving up the ghost, if you'll pardon the pun, it feels right for us to be the ones to take it apart. Anyway, let me know if you have any other questions. Otherwise, I'll drop you a line in a couple of weeks when the job's done. Regards, Gordy. 2. Alison Leshy, g.leshy at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk From Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 12th. 2020. Subject. Ray. Exhumation pause. Hi, Alison. Bad news, I'm afraid. Well, odd news, at least. David suggested I keep updating you with what's going on, as we've had to stop work for a day or two while an expert comes down. It shouldn't impact the timetable too much, so the original budget should cover it, but we can discuss all that later. I don't know if you actually saw us retrieving any units during your visit the other day, but for context... The containers they're buried in are of really varied quality. I'd say just under half were buried in decent coffins that are still in good enough shape to remove and transport unopened. For others, though, the wood has rotted to the point where it's pretty much impossible to keep the boxes together, and some were just wrapped in oilcloth. This means we're seeing, touching, and moving a lot of human remains directly. Don't worry, this isn't a health and safety thing. We have all the right gear, and David's making sure we follow procedure. It's just that one of the graves had a body that was too well-preserved for the age it should have been. Or at least, most of the skin was in extremely good condition. The back was completely covered in this complicated tattoo of a ship sailing across an open sea towards an open horizon. It was really impressive. Unfortunately, David thinks we need a second opinion and to run some tests to confirm that this body is as old as it should be as obviously if it's been buried more recently than 1908, then that technically makes the cemetery a crime scene, and we have to shut down for God knows how long. I'll be honest, though, I'm glad of the break. Taking up all these graves is starting to get to me a bit. I almost feel sorry for doing it. The waves are so close and getting closer. If I were a sailor buried here, I'd take some comfort in that. As you can see, I'm getting morbid. Short break will do us all some good, I think. We'll update you when I hear word. Regards, Gordy. 2. Alison Leshy, g.leshy at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk From Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 14th, 2020. Subject, Ray. Exhumation pause. Alison, can you give David a nudge for me? He's still working on that body we found and he stopped responding to my emails. 
I got him on the phone, but to be honest, he doesn't sound like he's in any real rush to complete the job, and while he's worrying about salt water and tattoos, we're out here sat on our hands, and I'm paying the lads by the day. It's almost enough to make you dream of sailing away for real, like that poor fella's tattoo. Saying that, I had another look at the photos David attached, and I'm starting to think I might have been wrong about it. When I first looked, I thought it was hopeful, a crew sailing towards the sunrise, but looking again, the sun is lower than I thought and there's a shape in the water behind the ship. I think they're being chased by something. Creepy, eh? Oh, and speaking of tattoos, you remember you wanted an update on local sentiment about the move? Well, I don't know if this counts as resistance. Hell, I don't even know if they're local. But there's someone started poking around the site asking questions. Big snake tattoo up their arm and a bunch of other ink. Wouldn't give their name, but claims to be a big deal online? Don't really know what that means, but they've been asking questions about the body. According to them, the tattoo is an Oscar Jarrett, and that's a big deal to some folks in that community. Something to do with Sutherland MacDonald, whoever that is? Don't know if that's quite what you were worried about, but thought you'd want to know. They're kind of giving the boys the creeps. We were thinking of calling the police if we saw them again, but I know you're worried about backlash, so we'll hold off doing that for now. You should visit the site again when you get the chance. The salt air will do wonders for your mood. It's weird. I've lived here all my life, but spending all this time out on the cliffs, it can still reach you, you know? The waves crash so loud, you can hear them in your dreams. G. 2. Alison Leshy, g.leshy at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk From Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 16th. 2020. Subject. Ray. Ray. Exhumation pause. I just wanted to reach out and offer my condolences. I don't know how close you were to David, but this sort of thing always hits hard, even if it's just a colleague. If it's any consolation, he's with the sea now. The deep will care for his bones. G. 2. Alison Leshy. G.Leshy at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk from Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 17th, 2020 Subject, Ray, David's passing Dear Alison, I should first offer my formal apology. I was unaware that my emails were coming across as in any way unprofessional, and shall forthwith attempt to acquit my communication in a manner more becoming of one corresponding with a government official. My thoughts and opinions on maritime matters will no longer be included in my emails. In addition, I should be most grateful if you could see fit to provide myself with appropriate authorization to contact the medical examiner's office to follow up with the cadaver that has been causing such consternation. Yours sincerely, Gordon Allen Johnson. 2. Alison Leshy, g.leshy at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk From Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 18th, 2020 Subject, Ray, 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 David's passing Look, I was not making fun of you, but I'm not sure what you want. I'm emailing an employer about my work and I'm getting accused of my emails being unprofessional. That's the best I can manage. I haven't been sleeping much recently. Weird dreams, shapes in the water and that. And before you say that it's unprofessional to tell you that, I'm just giving an explanation. That's all. I need you to contact the examiner again. He's dragging his feet. Besides, I want to see the body again. I dug him up. He's my responsibility. I just need to see it. I need to know what's in the water. 2. Alison Leshy, g.leshy at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk From Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 20th, 2020 Subject, Ray, examiner's office break-in It wasn't me. I swear, it was that creep, the one with all the ink. They want to keep it for themselves. I saw them. I saw them hanging around the office when I was waiting. Waiting so long just to see it, just to know what's in the water. And they took it. They think they're smart, but I saw them. I know where they're staying, and if they think they deserve it, they're wrong. It belongs to the deep. I'm going to go get it. 
I'm going to find it, and if they try to stop me, I swear the ocean will claim us all. I can taste the salt and spray. It's waiting in the water. 2. Alison Lashley, g.lashley at cornwallcouncil.gov.uk From Gordon J. Hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk Date, January 20th, 2020. Subject, Ray, Ray, examiner's office break-in. There was a problem delivering your message to hello at padstowgroundworks.co.uk. This email address is no longer in service. Alice? Hmm? Is there a way to cross-reference cases? What do you mean? I just got another case about tattoos. And? You already know the page to check the scores? Yeah, but I just thought it might be worth noting somewhere that they might be linked. There's this tattooist... And I think there might be... What have I told you about thinking? <sighs> don't. That's right. I don't think there's any way to mark cases as connected. They all come in standalone. That's just how it works. Yeah, I get it. Besides, I thought we'd establish that we aren't interested in any more creepy investigation. Christ on a pedal bike! What happened to you? Tube was delayed. Points failure. And that's why you look like the before picture for a sleep clinic. I have been having some trouble sleeping. Not that it's any of your concern. Oh, but I am concerned. So very concerned. I can't decide if you look more like a bog witch with caffeine withdrawal or that Cheddar Gorge mummy. She's allowed to be a bit tired, Alice. It's fine. Whoa there, we talked about this, Sam. No need to be so savage. We're here to help. Now, Gwen... If you had to rate your mattress on a scale of one to that big medieval wheel they used to torture people with... Can I please just get some work done, you... Hang on. Did you get me a coffee? Uh... Yeah. You like mocha? Yes. Thank you, Alice. I... Sure. Whatever. Don't get used to it. Is Lena in yet? She went into her office about an hour ago. She hasn't come out since. Why? Nothing. We need a debrief on a meeting I had. Right, well, I think... Sorry, sorry, I know, I know. There was an emergency at home. I had to... I'm sorry I'm late. Do you have any idea what the time is? I'm sorry. Are you joking right now? I have responsibilities now, Alice. I need more of an explanation than just a home emergency. You arrived literally one minute ago. And I gave a full explanation for my lateness. Which, I might add, I didn't actually need to do for a subordinate. It's fine, really. No, it's not. You don't owe her anything. In fact, you should take her coffee as reparation. One of my radiators sprung a leak and flooded the lounge. I see. Well, that's understandable. But don't let's make a habit of it, shall we? Of course. See? That wasn't so painful, was it, Alice? Let it go. Luckily, I don't think Lena's noticed, so you should be okay. She's not as laid back as I am. <coughs> Good to know. Right. Well, if that's everything, you all really should get to work. Otherwise, you'll never get out of here. Don't let me keep you. I'd like to see you try. I'll be in Lena's office if you need me. You okay, Alice? It honestly doesn't bother me. I can't believe she drank your mocha. Huh? Ah, you're back, I see. How did it go? I trust you were successful. What was that? Excuse me. What the hell was that? Ah, presumably you are referring to Mr. Bonzo. No. No, no, I watch Nigel's SOS every week as a kid. I know Mr. Bonzo. That thing was not Mr. Bonzo. I assure you that it was. He is one of our externals. Mr. Bonzo is a man in a big, fat, funny suit who pours green custard on celebrities. That abomination... 
wasn't a costume. That was skin. It was sagging. It was sweaty. I'll grant you that Mr. Bonzo is one of our more obviously grotesque externals, but I assure you he is a valued asset. I thought he was going to kill me. But he didn't, which means you've passed the first part of your probation. Congratulations. Did you scream? What? No. You should. It really helps one cope with the more affronting aspects of the job. And they usually like it. What was in that envelope I gave him? A name and an address. But for who? I'm sure you've already worked that out. But just in case you haven't, keep an eye on the caseloads over the next few days. It should become abundantly clear. I don't understand. Yes, you do. But why? Why comes later. For now, it's best you try to process the what. I'll let you know when I have another liaison assignment for you. I... Okay. Oh, and Gwen? Yes? Get some sleep. You look dreadful. Magnus Protocol is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. The series is created by Jonathan Sims and Alexander J. Newell and directed by Alexander J. Newell. This episode was written by Jonathan Sims and edited with additional materials by Alexander J. Newell with vocal edits by Nico Vitesse. Soundscaping by Meg McKellar and mastering by Catherine Manella, with music by Sam Jones. It featured Billy Hindle as Alice Dyer, Shahan Hamza as Samama Khalid, Anuja Battersby as Gwen Bouchard, Lorianne Davis as Celia Ripley, Sarah Lambie as Lena Kelly, with additional voices from Jonathan Sims. The Magnus Protocol is produced by April Sumner, with executive producers Alexander J. Newell, Danny McDonough, Lynn C., and Samantha F. G. Hamilton, and associate producers Jordan L. Hawke, Taylor Michaels, Nicole Perlman, Cetia Sturaven, and Megan Nice. To subscribe, view associated materials, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Thanks for listening.